Europe is filled with myths and legends about ancient civilizations that were said to have existed long ago, but met their demise, often because of some great cataclysmic event. The most obvious example is the story of Atlantis, made famous by Plato, but a term that existed before Plato's time, as it was also used by Herodotus. Other legends speak of inhabited regions to the north, such as Hyperborea, which allegedly was populated by a race of giants who lived beyond the north wind. We find similar stories of giants and cataclysms all over the world, even mirrored in parts of the Bible. There seems to be endless debate about whether these stories are based in truth or merely allegory. As early as the 12th century, the Irish believed in the existence of a strange island that could be viewed along the west coast of Ireland once every seven years. There was an oral tradition of telling stories about an island in a fog bank or a floating island that would disappear when people approached it. Later, the stories were printed in books about Irish folklore. The text you're looking at is a chapter from a book titled Irish Wonders, published in 1888. It includes tales about ghosts, giants, demons, leprechauns, banshees, fairies, witches, old maids, and other marvels of the Emerald Isle. It's a story about an enchanted island that was allegedly visible to inhabitants of County Cork on July 7th, 1878. The island vanished and would later appear periodically off the west coast of Ireland. There continues to be widespread interest in the mythological island. The name High Brazil originated from Celtic mythology. According to Irish folklore, an island named High Brazil was visible from the west coast of Ireland for only one day every seven years, the rest of the time it was obscured by fog. Irish poet Gerald Griffin describes it like this. On the ocean that hollows the rocks where ye dwell, a shadowy land has appeared, as they tell. Men thought it a region of sunshine and rest, and they called it High Brazil, the Isle of the Blessed. From year unto year on the ocean's blue rim, the beautiful specter showed lovely and dim. The golden clouds curtained the deep where it lay, and it looked like an Eden away, far away. An island named Brazil was shown on maps of the Atlantic Ocean for centuries, with the earliest being a chart by Spanish cartographer Angelino Dolkert in 1325. Venetian cartographer Andrea Bianco placed an island named Insula de Brasil on a chart in 1436. Most mainstream historians believe that mapmakers placed the Phantom Island on their charts after hearing rumors about its existence. But since many failed expeditions were launched to find the island, they have concluded that the island never existed. Although it was never found, Brazil Island continued to appear on maps until at least 1873. This is a detail from a map created by Spanish cartographer Diego Gutierrez in 1562. The island is named Isola de Brazil. It is located southwest of Ireland and east of the sea monster. This map is published in 1570 by Abraham Ortielis. An island named Brazil is shown west of central Ireland. It's situated right under the image of Europa, after whom the continent of Europe is named, sitting on a bull. In Greek mythology, Europa was the mother of King Minos of Crete and the Phoenician princess from the Phoenician port city of Tyre, which is in modern-day Lebanon. Incidentally, according to the Bible, King Hiram of Tyre helped King Solomon build the temple in Jerusalem. The Hiram Abiff myth is also used in secret Freemason initiations. In Homer's Iliad, dated to around 8th century BC, Europa is kidnapped by Zeus, who decided to seduce or rape her. In Greek mythology, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference.
He transformed himself into a tame white bull and mixed in with her father's herds. While Europa and her helpers were gathering flowers, she saw the bull, caressed his flanks, and eventually got onto his back. Zeus took that opportunity and ran to the sea and swam with her on his back to the island of Crete. He then revealed his true identity and Europa became the first queen of Crete. Zeus later recreated the shape of the white bull in the stars, which is now known as the constellation Taurus. It's interesting that cave art attributed to Cro-Magnon, created during the Pleistocene, or Ice Age, also seems to depict astrological scenes with the bull representing the constellation of Taurus and the Pleiades right behind it on its back, which I write about in one of my books and will cover in a future video. That said, according to Herodotus, Europa was kidnapped by Greeks who were seeking to avenge the kidnapping of one of their princesses from the Peloponnese, a region of Greece that was ruled by the Spartans. Her name was Io, one of the mortal lovers of Zeus, an ancestor of many kings and heroes such as Perseus and Heracles, and astronomers even named a moon of Jupiter after her in 1614. Of course, Europa is also a moon of Jupiter, and Jupiter is the Roman name for Zeus. The ancients connected Io with our own moon, and in the Prometheus myth, she refers to herself as the Horned Virgin. Zeus also lusted after her, and she initially rejected his advances, so in some versions of the myth, he turned her into a cow. While these stories allude to astrotheology, they're also part of the ancient mystery schools, which have to do with harnessing and transmutation of romantic energy from a raw form into a more refined form of energy known as prana, chi, ki, or vril. This can be said for any ancient myth that involves horns. In the ancient mystery schools, it's really about converting lust and animal desires into spiritual life force and enlightenment. Back to High Brazil. And here's a detail from a nautical chart made in 1630 by Portuguese cartographer Wao Texiera Albernez. The island is shown with a circular shape in the lower left corner. It's divided in half by a river and named Do Brasil. As maritime traffic increased, cartographers began to doubt the existence of Brazil Island. This image is a detail from a map that was published in 1753 by British cartographer Thomas Jeffreys. The island is shown southwest of Ireland as the imaginary Isle of O Brazil. High Brazil was sometimes identified as a rock. Here is a detail of a map that was published in 1769 by French cartographer Guillaume de la Isle. The island is named Rocker de Brasil, meaning Brazil Rock. It is located beneath the lower left side of the title Cartouche. Some believe the name Brazil stems from a Celtic word bres, meaning to bless, and that the island was named High Brazil or Island of the Blessed. It is not, however, the only use of Brazil to donate an Atlantic island. For example, the 1351 Medici Atlas denotes two islands of Brazil, one placed traditionally off Ireland and the other in the Azores archipelago. The Brazil, in this case, could be referenced either to the island's volcanic complex or to dragon's blood, a valuable red resin dye found on the island. Dragon's blood is very bright red and it's obtained from different species of a number of distinct plants and in continuous use since ancient times as varnish, medicine, incense, and dye. Of course, one can't ignore the name of the largest nation in South America, which is also called Brazil. And when one looks into the etymology of its name, 
it's generally agreed upon that it likely comes from the Portuguese word for Brazil wood, a tree that once grew plentifully along the Brazilian coast. In Portuguese, Brazil wood is called Pau Brazil, and the word Brazil commonly given the etymology red like an amber, as Brazil wood produces a deep red dye that was highly valued by European textile industry and was the earliest commercially exploited product from Brazil. Of course, this brings us back full circle to Europa, the Phoenician princess, as Phoenician was not what they called themselves, but a word the Greeks used to describe them, which means red, and also shares roots with the word phoenix, which in Greek mythology is the son of Agenor, a Phoenician king of Tyre, who Herodotus estimates lived sometime before the year 2000 BC. According to Greek mythology, Agenor was born in Memphis of Egypt to Poseidon and Libya, and he had a twin brother named Belus. Belus remained in Egypt and reigned over Egypt, while Agenor departed to Phoenicia and reigned there. It's interesting to note that the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Phoenicians, and the ancient Minoans, which is the civilization that inhabited Crete, where Europa was allegedly taken to, were all depicted in ancient art as having painted the skin of their men red. These ancient civilizations also revered the snake, whether it be the Minoan snake goddess that holds a serpent in each hand, symbolizing the sacred energy of enlightenment, or the Egyptian pharaohs, who are sometimes depicted with a serpent on their forehead, or the Phoenician serpent priest, who is echoed in the god Dionysus and is represented by a wand, a staff, or later a caduceus. We know the Phoenicians would sail to northern Europe to obtain tin, which they mixed with copper to create bronze. There are many examples of customs linking the Celtic Druids with the Phoenicians. While I can't mention many of them here because they involve ritualistic rites which are censored on this platform, including sacrifice, I can mention that the Druids were also known to be associated with serpent symbology, and it's the same symbolism that comes down to us in the story of St. Patrick, who rid Ireland of snakes, even though Ireland has never been known to have any snakes on it during the entire Holocene. There should be a link in the description to a video I made on the subject where I call the serpent people the generic term pagan and I said I would make a future video elaborating on their identity. In 1772, General Charles Valencé, a leading Irish scholar of the day, published his famous work, Essay on the Antiquity of the Irish Language. In his opening remarks, he states, on a collation of the Irish with the Celtic, Punic, and Phoenician languages, the strongest affinity will appear. It may therefore be deemed a Punic-Celtic compound. From the Canaanite proceeded the Phoenician, from the Phoenician, Carthaginian, or Punic was derived from Aeolian, Dorian, and Etruscan, and from these was formed the Latin of the Roman Saxon capital letters the Irish use but three. All the others bear a great resemblance to the primitive Canaanite and Phoenician. The division of time into a seven-day week was practiced by Irish Celts identical to the Phoenicians. Keep in mind the Egyptians had a ten-day week, the Romans and Etruscans had an eight-day week, the Maya had two week lengths of 13 days and 20 days, so the number seven is noteworthy especially since the High Brazil legend states it is only visible one day every seven years. Irish history records three main waves of colonization to that isle in ancient times, but there were likely more, and they probably went back to a time predating many of the myths themselves. The Maritime Archaic, or Red Paint People, were a North American culture complex along the coast of Newfoundland, the Canadian Maritimes, and northern New England, which began in approximately 7,000 BC, over 9,000 years ago. 
The culture consisted of sea mammal hunters in the subarctic who used wooden boats and engaged in long distance trade from northern Europe to Canada and the eastern U.S. as far south as Maine. Their civilization lasted until the time of Columbus, but high susceptibility to Eurasian diseases and European persecution pushed them inland and away from the fish and marine mammals that had been a staple of their diet. They disappeared in the 1800s as a distinct tribe, but were recognizable by the red ochre used on their burial sites and red paint applied to their skin, which is where the term redskins comes from. Archaeogenetic research in 2017 established that the Maritime Archaic or red paint people had nothing in common with the Inuit or other indigenous tribes who later inhabited the same area. A study published in Current Biology compared the mitochondrial DNA of 17 individuals, 13 Bithuk, 53 Maritime Archaic, and 2 Paleo Eskimo, and found that these populations were not at all related, but instead the Maritime Archaic had genetic affinities with the Basque people, who are between Spain and France, who have among the highest concentration of Rh negative blood type in the world, a trait also shared by many people in Ireland. That said, one can only wonder if this belief in the existence of High Brazil gave rise to some of these ancient transatlantic voyages, and if there indeed did exist a once inhabited island which is now submerged below the waves. There's no doubt that seafaring civilizations could reach such a place if it existed. And in addition to rising sea levels since the last ice age, this part of the North Atlantic also contains complex geology with numerous fault systems, which are susceptible to land rising and falling, especially from the pressures caused by the mid-Atlantic ridge spreading which also happens to be the most likely location for Atlantis around the present day Azores Islands. While the online consensus seems to be that the island was a fictional place described as a sort of pagan myth meant to be someplace one goes in the afterlife, I happen to have a gut feeling that the old map makers took their craft seriously and would not portray a landmass on their maps if they did not have a degree of certainty that it existed. So I decided to investigate for myself with Google Maps, using the old maps as a general guide to see if I could detect any elevated areas off the coast of Ireland. It seems that the shape is portrayed as circular with a canal running through it. I also noticed another island to the southwest of where High Priscilla is supposed to be located and on this map, it's called Las Medas. You can see it here below the sea monster and above the Azores Islands. So by the looks of the elevated ocean floor and the distance from the mainland, I decided to start searching in this area, trying to see if I could find anything that would be above sea level or shaped like the images from the old maps. Zooming in a bit, I still couldn't detect anything but if it's there, this seems to be the correct area to look in. Once I zoomed in more, I noticed something. And not only is it in the exact spot that High Brazil was said to be, there was also another object below it resembling the other island Los Medas. I decided to play with the contrast a bit to see if I could get a better look. Yes, I definitely see something that not only looks round, but has a crease running in the middle, just like on the old maps. I played with the setting some more, and this image is the best that I could get it, and in my opinion, that is it. The maps and the Irish legends were true. I wasn't surprised, as I've come to learn that the ancient wisdom holds much truth, and modern mainstream academia and the media is either corrupt and dismissive, or so arrogant that they ignore any myth, legend, or folklore out of hand without even investigating and looking for themselves. That said, 
There should also be a link in the description to a video I did about Doggerland, another area now submerged which some have called the Atlantis of the North Sea that once connected Britain to mainland Europe. It was flooded by rising sea levels around eight or 9,000 years ago, which may have involved legends from the Frisians, another amazing piece of European prehistory, which is never taught in schools, especially after World War II, but I've also covered in a video, as I'm afraid the truth contained in these ancient stories is being deliberately covered up and history is being systematically replaced by a group only interested in pushing a political agenda. Thank you for giving me some of your time and thank you to those who share my videos as I rely on word of mouth. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon. My books make a great gift. If you'd like to support my work, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description section for those who are interested. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Please hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts. So kindly leave me a comment below. Please have a wonderful weekend and I hope to see you again soon.